So Rocky and I go around the world shooting lots of these videos, which are usually about 20 minutes long. That brings a bunch of problems. One, it's hard to consume that, that information unless you have the 20 minutes to watch this video. But also, Google can't see the words that I'm using or that, that my guests are using. And you can't engage with the words in an interesting way. And today, we're going to see how to do text on top of video with speaker text. <laughs> Who are you? Uh, my name is Matt Morales. I am the founder and CEO of Speaker Text. Uh, Speaker Text is an online on demand uh, video to text platform. And uh, I have a kind of crazy background. I, uh, I used to be a journalist and had this idea in the course of uh, recording videos for my, own, um, for my own use as a journalist. And uh, before that, I was a paramedic in the South Bronx and I fought forest fires in Montana. Wow, <laughs> quite a background. Um, we do lots of video, and, and we're always interested in how do we make this video consumable and interactive in a new way. And, and so that's why I was interested in what you guys were doing. I've, I've seen text to, or uh, video to, to text platforms before, but I wanted to see what makes you better and different. Yeah, so I mean, the, the thing that we're doing that, that's really different is that if you look at the market, there's these you know, fully automated systems, they're very high tech, but they suck. You know, um, anybody who's used Google Voice before, you know, has seen YouTube auto captions, you know, uh, the quality is just not there. It's very inconsistent. Sometimes you can have very, very embarrassing errors that are funny on like YouTube caption fail.com, but yeah. not, you know, uh, not something that a publisher would necessarily want to show to their, their users. Um, on the other hand, you have this really like, old school antiquated um, transcription industry, people in India, headphones, one person that can type really fast and, um, you know, and have a foot pedal with some specialized hardware. So what we've done is we've built this uh, virtual assembly line that uses, uh, that combines the power of crowdsourcing with uh, the parts of speech recognition and artificial intelligence that actually work. Um, and so what we do is we extract the audio from the video and uh, we use speech recognition to intelligently chop the video up and segment it into hundreds or thousands of small chunks. We then send that to Mechanical Turk and other labor pools where people transcribe, you know, maybe a five, 10 second chunk. It's really, really easy. It's, uh, I mean, almost anybody can do it. And then we put these back together into larger chunks and we have a series of editors go through and fix the errors, add, um, add formatting, punctuation, capitalization, et cetera. We have some secret sauce in there that ensures quality and that tracks workers and makes that what they're doing um, really high quality. Once that's done, we then use phonetic speech recognition to timestamp each word and natural language processing to figure out sentence boundaries so we give you sentence level resolution on the, uh, the timestamping. So that's sort of like the platform layer. You know, you give us video, we give you text. Uh, but on top of that, we've built this application layer that, where we say, okay, we have this timestamp text. And you know, uh, what cool stuff can we do with it? And so we've built this widget that uh, taps into the JavaScript API of a video player. So any player, so whether it's Brightcove, Uyala, YouTube, Blip TV, even self-hosted videos, uh, as the video plays back, it highlights each sentence as the video plays and scrolls through the transcript. You can click on the transcript and it'll jump to the exact moment you're interested in. So we could have, uh, I could have blogged this conversation and linked in right to right now, right? Oh, exactly. And people could have just clicked on that and seen it. Yeah, totally. Um, and what's really cool is you say, okay, it's interactive, but even beyond that, it's social. So now you find a, a really good juicy quote in an interview, you can actually tweet out that quote and it'll link back to the original publisher's page and go to that exact moment inside the video. Okay. On top of that, we've done some crazy stuff with JavaScript where if you copy and paste text, the text you've copied automatically links back to that exact moment inside the video where it came from. Oh, that's nice because on YouTube, I can sort of do that, but I have to figure out how to do it in a URL. Yeah, and it's about, you know, we say, okay, well, what's something that's really good for, for publishers, but it's also really good for consumers, yeah. you know? It's like, okay, the text now makes all the content searchable. You know, it shows up in Google. Beyond that, it makes the content more engaging. A lot of times what happens is a video starts playing, people don't find the part they're interested in, so they click away, you know, they're like, oh, this sucks, next. 
you know, with speaker text, you can just like, oh, just read the transcript, scroll through. But that's a part I'm interested. Boom, click, yeah. go there. So people end up watching videos longer. How, how much do we pay? Let's say this is a 20 minute long interview. How, how do we pay? It's two bucks a minute. So okay. it's an on demand, you know, uh, two bucks a minute. You know, you go through a website. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's that simple. You know, you just pay for what you use. Any discounts for quantity? Because we, we put a lot of quantity up. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, that's sort of like a call, call for pricing sort of thing okay. in terms of the, the discounts. But um, if you're doing a lot of video, sure. Yeah, so if you're a CNN, for instance, and you want to hire you, there's probably a negotiation then. Yeah, there's a negotiation. Okay. You know, but at the same time, they, a CNN is going to have sort of like a different tier of service expectations than, you know, random, you know, r random blogger, you know. How else do you differentiate from uh, other, other players? Because there, there's other people who are doing this kind of text, you know, text out of video kind of transcription services. Right? Quality, but also speed. You know, um, what we do by breaking it up into these small chunks, uh, it's parallel. it allows us to process the stuff in parallel. Um, and that's really different than how this has been done, you know, before. It's distributed distributed human computation. You know, yeah. if you want to get nerdy about, you know, how you describe it. Um, but that allows us to have, you know, it doesn't matter how long the video is. You know, it's not like, you know, so in the old model, one person transcribing it, if it's a two hour long video, it's gonna take that person longer than two hours to transcribe the whole right. thing. We can just chop it up into thousands of small chunks, send those to, uh, to you know, 2,000 people to transcribe in parallel and just do it as fast as if it was a minute long video. Interesting, so what's the average time on, on video coming back? Yeah, so we kind of like to follow the, um, the Zappos model of, you know, um, under promise over deliver. Yeah. So we we sort of say like forty eight to seventy two hours. Um, you know, people some people have been getting their videos back back as quickly as like twenty three minutes. Yeah. You know, um, you know, I wouldn't say that that's average, but it can happen really fast. And the cool thing is we serve up the work dynamically, so we can have a queuing system. So if you're let's say you're like doing breaking news and you know you need this stuff super fast. Well, we have a distributed labor force. We could just serve it up dynamically to, to the workers. So it's the next thing everyone does in the system. Very cool. Um, tell me a little bit about the company. How, how is it funded? And give me some of the fundamentals behind the company. I started the company in October 2008, three weeks after Lehman collapse. Um, had no idea what I was doing initially. Um, we've ended up uh, you know, building it. We're now here. We start off in the East Coast in New York City. In August, we moved here to Mountain View to the speaker pad. Um, and, uh, you know, we've been growing at a really strong clip since we, since we, since we launched. Um, we, uh, we haven't announced any of our funding yet, um, but uh, that is happening and it's going very well. Um, you know, we haven't had to go out and buy any AdWords or doing any sort of, you know, outbound marketing or hiring sales forces. People are coming to us, you know, including some pretty big people. You know, so uh, just through SEO and, and, and PR, it just shows how much of a need there is in the market. I mean, yeah. I'm sure you see this. You know, this is an unsolved problem. It's a big problem. The SEO component alone, never mind the social and interactive engagement layers, people need that. It's an unsolved need. And the cool thing is it's not, it's not hot, right? It's not, it's not like we're doing, you know, group buying for dogs, you know, my face square pond tube. You know, we're not one of those companies. We're doing something yeah. definitely different and unique. And that's something that I think both attracts sort of like PR and publicity and engineers and then customers to say, it's like, oh, this is different. I haven't seen this before. These guys are actual innovators. Yeah. How about mobile? The iPad and the iPhone and, well, we can even get into the TV systems like Google TV and, and how they're changing. But all these new devices are changing how I consume media and are you thinking about how to put transcripts into those uh, new devices yeah totally um, so what we do is we uh, is in our in our widget in our sort of our, our application um, we inject the transcript into the HTML of the page beneath the video so uh, that's how it gets indexed by Google for SEO um, and so in an iPhone let's say where you know you can't have the sort of advanced JavaScript functionality, and actually the play, the video player itself doesn't have the proper APIs that we can tap into. You can still read the transcript and scroll through it, 
um, and it just shows up in the little box beneath the video. So it makes it totally accessible. That can be really cool, right? You have a flash, let's say you have a flash video. Well, that flash video is useless, right? Yeah. But now you have the transcript and you can read through it, you know, um, and you can still consume the content and engage with that without actually, you know, uh, being able to watch the video, which is kind of big for accessibility and kind of revolutionary. Yep. What's next for you guys? Uh, I think the big thing and one of the, the challenges is scaling a system like this, you know, uh, you know, scaling a distributed workforce. That's, you know, of using micro tasks and this crazy system with the QA and whatnot. No one's ever, very few people have ever done that. This is sort of, this is, we're getting a new territory here. And so you say, okay, well, you know, if we want to go from, you know, uh, 100,000 workers to, you know, 3 million workers, you know, and finding these people and doing really innovative ways to, uh, to, to, to discover workers and to, to give, and to give them work and sort of packaging it ways and, you know, trying to figure out ways to turn it into a game and stuff like that. Um, I mean, you mentioned the whole sort of like non, non-speech, you know, yeah. descriptions and, and sort of labeling. Uh, I think that's going to be big. I mean, there's speech, speech-based content is a large part of what we do and a large part of video on the internet. Uh, but there's a lot more to video. And how do you turn it into text? You know, and that's something that's really, really hard for machines to do. Yeah. You know, how, how do you guys split up the video, the video into little chunks? Because uh, if you split, split up in the wrong place, you get half of a word, right? And then how does somebody transcript, transcribe half of a word? Yeah, no, so th th that's, and that's actually really important. So uh, that's part of where the speech recognition comes in. So we have a classifier that figures out speech from non-speech content. And so we, we make the chops, we do the segmentation at, in the, at, at the non-speech pauses. So a conversation, I'll stop, and then it'll chop right there and segment it out. So it's done intelligently, not just sort of arbitrarily. Very cool. So it's an interesting system, and I, I love hearing about how people are using crowdsourced uh, business models. Yeah, and one of the things is like, people say, oh, crowdsourcing, you know, where's the technology there? You know, um, but then when you actually get in the weeds with it, you're like, oh, holy cow, to make this work, we need to build technology around the QA systems, you know, to, to make that work and to error check. Because, I mean, if you think about it, just as many people as there are willing to work, you know, there's a lot of smart scammers. And fighting scammers and spammers is a huge challenge. Yeah. And so it's funny because crowdsourcing, it's, you know, if you think about the history of the Internet, a lot of people don't think of Google as a crowdsourcing company. But if you look at sort of what comes actually comes out of like the AI, the artificial intelligence research labs, there's always some component of human intelligence. Mm -hmm. And so before Google, there was all these search engines that were trying to do a better job of analyzing the text on the page. Yeah. And they all sucked. And so then Google comes along. And Google says, you know, we can use humans in this process. Yeah. And what we can do is we can look at what people are already doing and how they're linking back. Uh, and how they're linking back to uh, to videos uh, or to, uh, to to web pages, and then use the human component and overlay it with this automated component, and boom! Now you have the world's biggest search engine. You know, and, and the, the internet has changed. You know, and, and all these things where people are trying to create truly artificial intelligence, and it's not there. You know, it always reaches this maybe eighty-five percent accuracy that is okay, but not not complete. Um, and so the way these solution, these problems actually get solved is by layering on the human component, and that's just across sort of uh, many many disciplines or in, within the field. Where do we uh, find you? How, how do we uh, you know hire you to do our videos? Uh, just go to speakertext.com. And are you guys on Twitter? Yes, we're, we're at speakertext. And how about you personally? Um, uh, Matt Morellis, M A T T M I R E L E S. Very cool. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.